The forbidden history of mankind. You are matter, you are an accidental mixture of chemicals. You are a superior animal, an evolved monkey, you are an accident of the laws of physics. Do you feel targeted? It should, because, although no one has told you openly, not only science, but all the so-called means of promoting knowledge bombard you daily with this idea. That's what researchers tell us, or rather what they are allowed to tell us. Isn't it paradoxical that, although the current flattering new age places the individual at the center of the universe, crowning him the absolute master of nature and his own existence, from the promoters of the same creed we learn that we are only opportunistic and a little lucky primates. Different from, smiles, animals only through a more consistent cranial content. Matter, matter only. Behind these scenic games that put a well-calculated order in our lives and thoughts hides a much wider and darker backstage landscape than can be suspected by analyzing the accessible facts. However, the all-inclusive theory will try to shed some light on the unknown knowledge of humanity. There are many specialists, including names such as Michael Cremo and Richard Thompson. Authors of The Forbidden Archaeology and The Hidden History of the Human Race, who talk about the phenomenon of filtering knowledge. As the term suggests in context, this policy, suspected of being a weapon of the elites who rule the world in the shadows, is meant to keep the masses in ignorance and ignorance. In other words, it is about intellectual power, from which derives all the forms of domination and control to which human civilization is subjected today. However, the present documentary will not deal with who the thieves of these machines are. But they aim to reveal something about the way they operate. Involved people knew. The faceless leaders who operate the levers of this mechanism of censorship massively limit the access of the masses to information that concerns especially the origins and past of the human species. The foundation of understanding the existence and purpose in life. These are essential aspects of civilization and of the planet that, if we knew them, we would better understand our nature and mission, but that would make us free and harder to control. There are things that I know, but that I keep away from us, out of selfishness, out of interest, out of pride, out of the need to have an ascendant over others. The fundamental premise from which the thesis of specialists such as those mentioned above starts, as that human history is completely different from the one that is officially presented to us today, resides, as a debut, in the ancient writings. Most cultures have such books that speak of the existence of advanced civilizations in the distant past, but the Sanskrit writings of India are by far the most explicit in this direction. Ancient manuscripts, such as the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, or the Vedas speak openly, in addition to Indian philosophical and cultural principles about fascinating ancient episodes that provide detailed descriptions of technologies that mankind has barely acquired today. Aircraft are described along with their operating principles. Weapons such as the atomic bomb or even the hydrogen bomb are mentioned, and advanced medical and genetic techniques are described. The same books talk about the ages of the Earth, the cyclical life on the planet, and the succession of civilizations. Similar beliefs come from the Roman and Egyptian wisdom, but especially from the Greek one, from where, from Plato and Aristotle. We receive teachings regarding the same sequence of life. They strongly believed in a being of the ages, following an archetypal pattern. Thus, in the ancient beliefs, which, moreover, are not to be rejected at all, a great life cycle begins Edenically, with a golden age, in which all human beings are spiritualized, conscious, good. This era is succeeded by those of silver, bronze and iron, which gradually characterize human depreciation by cultivating greed and individualism so that the world must be reconfigured. Which is what happens, through a general cataclysm and a subsequent reenactment of life. In the view of Indian initiates, humans were born several times and as many times, minus one. They disappeared as a result of disasters to exterminate the species. But this would have happened only for life to flourish again, by repopulating the earth either by paranormal refugees, unaffected by Armageddon, or by higher civilizations in other cosmic spheres. These books make very serious references to their existence millions and even billions of years ago. 
to the beginnings of the planet, of intelligence on Earth, and of evolved civilizations. However, in order to support such premises, there must be physical evidence. In their absence, one could easily assume that the writings are false, false, the product of a disproportionate imagination. Surprisingly, they are confirmed not only sporadically, but even abundantly, with countless archaeological evidence of the existence of ancient advanced civilizations coming to light, accidentally or hunted, in all corners of the world. Theory is theory. But practice, the examples are numerous and have features that are far too complex to be convincingly presented here, but we will make a few brief notes. These are archaeological discoveries such as the Egyptian wooden model from the 2nd century BC, which has the shape of an airplane, the hammer discovered on the outskirts of London, embedded in a 500 million year old rock, the map drawn in 1513 by Turkish Admiral Piri Rice, which shows in detail portions of Africa, America and Antarctica, given that Antarctica was officially discovered only in 1818. Moreover, the map represents the white continent as it looks under ice, state in which it is probably 10,000 to 12,000 years ago, the city of Nan Madol, built between 200 BC and 800 AD. On a coral reef in Micronesia, of about 250 million tons of basaltic blocks, the transport of which cannot be explained, the Koso artifact from Olancha, California, resembling an ignition device found inside a piece of stone that would have taken 500,000 years to form. A handprint was found in a layer of limestone about 110 million years old in Glen Rose, Texas. A fossilized human finger, dating from the Cretaceous, has been found in the frozen north of Canada. In Utah, in a layer of rock estimated to be 300 to 600 million years old, what appears to be the footprint of a human foot was discovered, worn in a kind of sandalwood. Miners in South Africa have uncovered hundreds of metal spheres of unknown origin. Called Klerksdorp spheres, they are about 3 to 5 centimeters in diameter, and some have inlaid parallel lines, like ditches, all around. The spheres appear to be man-made, although specialists cannot explain how the lines were made. The rock layer from which these spheres were extracted dates back to the Precambrian, and their age is estimated at 2.8 billion years. The examples can go on, these are just some of the most popular ones that have reached the eyes of the general public. Surprisingly, however, although such archaeological achievements speak volumes about an indisputable reality, scientists do not apply more than a label on which is written mysteries. Why do we choose to consider them curious and bizarre, when we can accept the sometimes indisputable stories that these objects tell us? No one is officially tired of digging deeper and understanding the huge implications of these things. As for us, the contempt displayed by the elite in relation to the vulgar is of an outrageous cynicism. We are served, through the researchers and the publications they have in our pocket, all this information. Probably mismatched, relying relentlessly on the fact that ignorance will play its part and will prevent us from being actively involved or even caring, of them. Because, after all, who are we to think about such things? What does it matter if people are 10,000, 100,000, or a million years old? These preoccupations are strange, abstract. They represent exclusively the prerogative of some misunderstood philosophers and mystics, isolated in their ivory towers. We must live our lives to the fullest, time means money, it is short. Life passes, it must not be wasted with existential questions. These are just some of the trends that the elites have impregnated us with. In order to dress up perhaps the most important skills we should possess in consumerism that is often ridiculous and ridiculous in the eyes of a deeply contaminated public opinion. Religious indoctrination? Think it over however, those who choose not to be fooled by highly aggressively conveyed evolutionary theories are more in line with a spiritual tendency to measure things. These people view human becoming, not as an evolution of matter, but rather as an involution, from a higher consciousness. This premise may resemble a religious argument, a ridiculous doctrine. But try to ask yourself if you do not have this impression precisely by virtue of the information that is injected into all media.
Man is not a one-sided product. As our world leaders are trying to convince us. It is really made of matter, it is coarse, but it also has a mental as well as a spiritual dimension. Our world is, for this reason, seen by the initiates as a gross cosmic stage, which will be followed by higher levels of reality, dominated by subtle energies called by different cultures spirits. Angels, gods, saints. Birth would practically mean the process by which a being of pure consciousness descends into the lower realms of the cosmos and is covered by the low energies of the mind and matter. All cultures and civilizations believed that we came from a spiritual level of reality, lived in accordance with this belief and were harmonized with nature and life. Except for us, who renounce any superior force. We, who believe ourselves to be leaders and superiors, not only as a civilization, but on an individual level. It is in agreement with the current course of things that, I, should be at the center of things and, me, should be the reference element of existence. And precisely because, I is not alone. But six billion like him, this leads to isolation, to division and conflict, to domination and rebellion. If I fight only for myself, then my cause is no longer the cause of others. Which makes me absolutely alone, unified in nothing with anyone else. Although it may seem outdated, it is only the application of the maxim, divide and rule, on a global scale. I said above that if the idea of spirituality seems to you to be a doctrine, a desperate response of the church to the current advancement of science, then you should ask yourself if you do not believe this precisely because you are controlled. Well, let's support such a statement with an example. This is the case of Pierre and Marie Curie. The two French researchers of the 19th and 20th centuries are officially recognized for their performances in the field of radioactivity who also honored their work by winning a Nobel Prize in Physics in 1903. No textbook and no book in general will mention their active involvement and meritorious in parapsychological experiments. For several years, the two researchers conducted a series of supernatural tests in laboratories and institutions, recording remarkable results and unexpected successes. Materialized by communication with spirits, extracorporealizations, materializations, clairvoyance and other such phenomena listed today as bazakans. This intense and disguised activity is attested by a vast documentation found in the archives of the institutions that hosted Pierre and Marie's initiatives. And in this case, the examples of hallucinatory performances and discoveries in the spiritual realm are in large enough numbers to attest to the indisputable existence of such a human dimension. Why hide them? To mask the spiritual side of humanity and to channel civilization to materialism and consumerism. We are widowed by this deprivation of knowledge, of important aspects of existence and of the human being, capital in the complete understanding of what we are and what we actually have to do here. If we know nothing about these things, which, here, exist as part of reality, it is natural to take refuge in production and consumption, in ephemeral, in small pleasures and in truly animal joys. And this is not a coincidence. Think about it. All this mystification happens because science has at its core an extremely influential group that deliberately hides the most important discoveries. The motives of such an influential group can only be assumed, but probably the suspicions of those who issue them do not stray too far from the truth. Thus, Michael Cremo suspects that two major directions motivate elites to filter knowledge. One would be human nature itself, the denial, the rejection of theories that contradict their own. Because they are people in love with themselves and their truths, not willing to accept alternatives. Then there are probably the deeper reasons for power and control. In the educational system, evolutionists have held a position high enough to dictate answers to fundamental questions, who are we? Where do we come from where are we going these answers, as is well known. A purely materialistic, completely ruling out any divine involvement in the creation of man. Therefore, it is not surprising or accidental that humanity has taken a deeply materialistic and exclusively physical slope. Shadow manipulators have instilled in the masses erroneous values. The idea that the fundamental purpose of man is to produce and consume. 
always more. This, if there are still those who do not realize, gives birth to huge riches. Some of them go into the pockets of researchers, who are not only part of the mechanism of manipulation, but also underlie the concepts of marketed products, weapons, technology, luxury. Another large part of the funds goes into the pockets of the industries that produce them and, last but not least, into the deep pockets of governments that charge huge taxes, in some places. On massive trade, this means nothing more than the fact that very strong forces are interested in keeping things in the world as they are today. They do not want to see this process interrupted and then it is not surprising that it becomes more and more energetic. Any decrease in economic activity creates shock waves. The elites understood that, for this reason, the production consumption process is furiously maintained. People do not have to think about existence, they do not have to ask high, deep problems. They have to be maintained and concentrated in the huge economic machinery. The clear example came after the terrorist attack of September 11, 2001. As a result of which thousands of people simply stopped buying and consuming. They chose to spend more time with their families and friends and wonder what life is like and where it is moving. What is happening to the world? The reverberations of such a phenomenon are great and lasting. The airlines, for example, have not fully recovered in the last seven years since the event. The masters of a financial empire cannot afford such losses. They should always have more, not even maintenance is an option. There are, therefore, great interests that will focus our body and soul on the material process of production and consumption, and the key element is the scientists and teachers. Those who teach us about the world and life. They insist that we are material beings and especially that this is a good thing. But if we get another answer to questions like who am I? Where do they come from? Where do I go? What I want? What if we were taught in schools that we are part of a higher and purer consciousness and should focus more on cultivating consciousness and spirit, because they are eternity? But, they do not want this, because it would mean that people are less controlled, which would mean less money and less power. That's why the idea of ownership was grounded. In a completely mercantile society, everyone has properties. The leaders, the leaders of mankind, hold these properties through various social, banking or political systems. Or, whoever controls the property also controls the owner. Proponents of the axiological system based on production and consumption, on accumulation and materialism, have insidiously infiltrated the influential and powerful positions of human societies, from where they can dictate reality to those below them. They created comfort systems that stimulate the human hedonistic side, capturing the individual in pleasures and moving him away from reality. The means of distraction today are extremely numerous and effective, taking all sorts of forms. Why shouldn't the war be waged on a community concerned with spirit and divinity? If only in this way it can be converted or even eliminated. The rulers of the world give birth to and finance wars, invent monetary systems and various constraints, applying. Under the guise of total freedom and an apotheotic civilization, a disguised martial law, worse than anything that has existed until now. Why is it worse? Because the whip behind you and the rapture can't steal your soul, they can't erase your faith and turn off the light in your eyes. Today's leaders are not content to lead people, masses. They are not content to have fine food and luxurious villas, they want to whip our souls. What is the final reason? Of course, apparently, keeping in mind a humanity that is born. Lives and dies for them, ensures a life not of kings, but of God here on earth. But is that all? How long can a man live to enjoy the pleasures of life? A few decades, their plans span centuries, why? For descendants, could such selfish people think about the future of their children? What do they know? Do I think that life is only one and then it is worth living from the position of a god? Because after it nothing matters. They are unlikely to be so naive, since they do not want us to be on the bridge to the spirit world. Do they know more than we can imagine? What are their resources? Is it really a conspiracy or just Brownian movement, natural evolutionary course, exacerbated human nature? 
Do you think that you can get answers to these questions from a luxury car with a high-performance phone in your hand and fashionable clothing on your body? Maybe the model next to you or the three-story villa will answer. Or, who knows, maybe the plastic from the cards you have in your wallet will blow your mind about life. All silent? Then where is the answer? In a happy meal certainly not.